Hey everyone, it's Dev Oski here and welcome to the video. This is going to be a video about something called the Umbria Nani Bridge, which is a way you can send crypto assets between different blockchains, between different cryptocurrency networks. So for example, if you wanted to move an asset from the Ethereum network to the Matic network or from the Matic network to the um, Binance Smart Chain network, you're going to be able to do that very quickly, very easily and most importantly, very cheaply using the Umbria Nani Bridge. So I'm just going to demonstrate to you how exactly you would move Umbria from the Ethereum network to the Matic network quickly and easily. So this is the Nani Bridge right here. I've got it right up on the screen. And the first thing you need to do is you need to select the networks that you're going to be sending from and then select how, what, like what token you're going to be sending, how much you're going to be sending, and then what uh, network you want to receive it on. So I'm sending from Ethereum. I'm going to be sending one Umbria. So I'm just going to click the max button because I have one Umbria in this wallet and I'm going to be receiving it on the Matic network. Now there's two ways to send MetaMask installed on your machine. And the second way is if you don't have the wallet uh, installed on your machine and you're using some other different kind of wallet, you can still do it um, if you're not doing it directly on this website. So I'm going to show you that way first and then I'll show you the way with MetaMask. So the first way is to just get the address of the bridge and send it the tokens and you'll receive them on the other network. But before you do that, you just need to make sure that the bridge can support that transaction. So if you put in something that's too large, it'll have a little message under here that says the Umbria bridge can't support that transaction. It's too many tokens, too many coins, there's not enough liquidity. But we're just gonna be sending one Umbria and that has perfectly enough liquidity for that. So the first thing you always need to do is just type in the amount that you want to send. And after that, click the address button and you'll be given this pop-up window here, which will give you an address. So this is the address on the Ethereum mainnet of the bridge, you're going to send the assets to this address. Now you might be using your phone or you might be using some other kind of wallet to do that. But once you sent the assets to this address, you can click this button beneath and that will take you directly to the explorer for that network that you're sending from. Once you've sent the assets to that address, you can click this button and the explorer will come up. You'll be able to see the transaction, how long it's taking and all that kind of thing on the explorer. So once you've seen that it's appeared on the explorer and you get out of that, you you'll see another similar button a little bit lower down and that is the button to go to the explorer of the receiving network. So let's say you're you're sending from the Ethereum network, you want to send Umbria from Ethereum and you want the Umbria to arrive on the Matic network. Well, once you've sent your assets to the Ethereum address, you can click this button down here to see whether they've arrived yet on the Matic network. And it normally takes about a minute after the bridge address has received the assets for it to send the assets back uh, to you on the Matic network. So you'd click that and you'd see that this is the Polygon or the Matic Explorer. You'll be able to see whether your transaction has arrived yet. But the other way, if you do have your MetaMask, and I would recommend recommend that you have your MetaMask installed on your machine, you can simply click the Bridge with MetaMask button. And once you've clicked that, you'll see this pop-up come up, which will give you a little bit of a breakdown of what exactly is about to happen. So we are sending one Umbria from the Ethereum network, and we're going to receive 0.997 Umbria on the Matic network. And then we can, we can say how much we want to spend on the transaction speed. So I'm gonna take it all the way up to less than two minutes, just to show you how cheaply and quickly the bridge can get this sort of thing done. So less than two minutes, and I'm gonna click send to initiate the transaction. So once I've done that, you'll see that MetaMask pops up and it'll tell me that, okay, one Umbria plus the gas fee for actually sending the transaction to the Ethereum network, and that's gonna cost me about seven bucks. So I'm gonna confirm that transaction and then you'll see that this button has come up here that I can click and actually view that transaction on the Etherscan Explorer and actually make sure that it's processed and, and see when it's completed. So I'm gonna click that now to see whether that's completed. So it says that this transaction on the uh, Explorer is going to take under 45 seconds. So we'll just wait for the Ethereum network to catch up with what we're doing. And oh, it just happened right there. So it took about 20 seconds or 25 seconds. Um, and you can see that it's success. So let's go back to the Umbria bridge and close this window down. And so now you've seen that this other little tiny window underneath has come up saying that the bridge is sending the funds to your wallet on the, Meta on the Matic network. So the bridge has already noticed that it's received funds and it's now in the process of sending funds to the Matic network and then the transaction will be complete. So normally this takes about 30 seconds after it's figured out that you know it's received some funds from you um, and after that the transaction will be complete. So let's just wait a moment or two for that. 
Okay, so it's been about 10 seconds since I said that. And now you see that there's a couple more things that have popped up on the screen. So it says this big tick here, which means that the transaction has been complete. And there's another button here where we can actually view that transaction on the Matic Explorer. But I won't do that because um, you know I know for sure that it's worked because uh, I wrote it. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the Connect to Matic network now so that we can actually view the funds that have arrived into our wallet on the other network. So when I click that, it says, do you want to connect to the Matic mainnet, which is the network that we're sending to? So we're going to switch to that network. And after that, we're going to add the asset to our MetaMask because Every different kind of asset that you have has a different address on each different network. So Umbria has a different address on Ethereum than it does on the Matic mainnet. So we still have to add the asset again back to our MetaMask. So we click that to add the asset. And now you can see it says, do you want to add this token to your MetaMask? And you can see that my balance is now 0 0.997 Umbria, which means that the tokens have indeed arrived on the Matic network. So as you can see, it was very, very cheap and it took only a couple of minutes. So as far as costs are concerned, there is a small fee that is paid to both the Umbria development team and the liquidity providers to the bridge. Because the way that this works is there needs to be liquidity for these different assets on all the different uh, blockchains. So the Umbria Nani bridge is actually rewarding liquidity providers for adding their liquidity to this platform. And that's actually a really interesting proposition for stablecoin liquidity providers. Typically with stablecoins, the liquidity provision only gives a very small APY. And that's because there's very low risk for providing a stablecoin asset to a farm because the asset isn't going to go um, in any direction as far as price is concerned. A, a one USDT is always going to be worth $1. So APY for, for providing liquidity uh, on stablecoins is always very low. But with the Umbria Nani bridge, it's going to be very high. The reason that people are going to be using this bridge is because there's going to be various arbitrage opportunities on different chains and people are going to be wanting to move their assets between chains very quickly so that they can capitalize on these arbitrage opportunities. Let's say you, all of your stuff is on Ethereum, but you want to get onto Binance Smart Chain because you've seen an arbitrage opportunity and you want to take advantage of that. You can quickly come into the Nani bridge, move all of your stablecoin over to the Binance Smart Chain to capitalize on that um, arbitrage opportunity and the liquidity providers will get paid because they will have provided liquidity for you to be able to move your assets between one chain and another. And we expect that there's going to be a massive amount of volume in stable coins as people move that liquidity from the different ch chains to each other to capitalize on those arbitrage opportunities. But it actually goes a step further than that because not all of the transactions that happen on the blockchain are humans t uh, typing and pushing buttons. A lot of them are created by software. There's trading bots everywhere, right? And so there's going to be an API for the Nani bridge, which will enable different softwares to interact with the bridge and automatically capitalize on the arbitrage opportunities by sending funds between chains using our API. So the amount of volume that's going to be um, demanded from the Umbria Nani bridge is going to be so high because of all the new opportunities that are going to be able to be capitalized upon that the liquidity providers of those stable coins are going to have their liquidity being used so much compared to the traditional farming paradigms that you would have maybe on SushiSwap or Uniswap or any of those AMM style liquidity providing sort of protocols. The thing with Uniswap V2 and a lot of the Uniswap V2 clones that have come out is that they don't actually use liquidity very efficiently. They only use a very tight band of liquidity. And that's why Uniswap came out with Uniswap V3, which was a seriously genius innovation from the Uniswap V2. But a lot of these other projects that have cloned Uniswap V2 and all of the clones of the clones of the clones, they're using the same AMM model that is very inefficient in using liquidity. So you have the two problems with um, stablecoin liquidity. One, the risk is really low, so the APY is already really low. And two, the liquidity isn't used um, very efficiently. But with the Nani bridge, all the liquidity is used um, in, in every transaction, of, at least fractionally. And also um, the demand for stable coins is so, is so high that it's even better in that way as well. So if you're somebody who's going to be farming with a stable coin, I would seriously recommend having a look at the Umbria Nani bridge and having a think about 
um, how that uh, liquidity provision on the Nani Bridge could be a good option for farming your stable coins. So thank you very much for watching this. I'm very, very excited about um, what this is going to bring. It's going to be coming out in the next few weeks once we make sure everything is completely secure um, and completely robust to, to um, you know, failures and things like that, just making sure that everything's completely dialed down. Um, and we'll let you know exactly when that's coming out very shortly. If you have any questions about the Nani Bridge or you have any assets in mind that you think would be really useful, or if you just want to test it or anything like that or just have a conversation with the developers please make sure you come to our discord channel we would love to talk to you and answer your questions about the bridge and once again thank you very much for watching this video i will see you in the discord